as me building a $4 million a year business in public. I always do these videos the same every day. One, it's consistent, but two, it also allows me to deliver value, mostly through Q&A, and then it's an engagement hack that helps me grow the channel. Then I build and strategize in public before finally showing you guys my growth across YouTube, Instagram, and products. Uh, published a hell of a banger video just uh, not even 12 full hours ago that just hit 21K views in the main channel here. And then this is the channel you guys are currently watching. It's my daily updates channel. So I'm just gonna scroll all the way down to the very bottom and answer everything you guys need all the questions you guys have. Before I do that, um, I live in Calgary, Alberta. Today, it is one of the worst wildfires, uh, not known to man or anything, but one of the worst wildfires in recent memory. I don't know if you guys could tell, but just moving this camera around, like, do you guys see that haze? Do you guys see, like, all the caked dust on my window and stuff? That is directly wildfire smoke from... Um, uh, yeah, like a series of wildfires a little bit north of me. So the unfortunate reality of that means that if you are outside and you try and do outside stuff today, you will breathe the equivalent of, I think, like 20 or 25 cigarettes. So last 48 hours, haven't really gotten to go outside. Kind of sucks, but thought I would let you guys know. Okay, so let's get into the Q&A. Let me start actually delivering you guys some value instead of just yapping all day. Nick, I drop in every once in a while on this channel. It's always a nice kick to my subconscious hearing your deep and unfiltered voice amidst YouTube noise. When I watch your content, it's a reminder of what matters is to get going and do stuff that has real world impact. Giuseppe, thank you very much, my friend. I'm glad to hear you're crushing it. Super powerful stuff right here. Thank you very much, Joanne, the goat of this. Thank you very much, V. Gutierrez. Day seven question. What's something that's taught in maker school that isn't taught on this channel at all? Also, how much background knowledge do you think it takes to join Maker School? For those of you guys that don't know, Maker School is my daily accountability program where I basically show you how, how to get up and running with your first AI customer in 90 days or I uh, give you all your money back. So it's on School, which is the number one community platform right now. And it's just like the best model for behavior change out there. All right, now that I'm done pitching, um, you know, the, the whole idea behind Maker School is not that I'm gatekeeping knowledge within it. I gatekeep some resources, obviously. I gatekeep some templates and stuff like that. But the whole idea is basically, if you come in, you want to make something happen with your life. You want to grow a business selling some sort of AI uh, uh, adjacent service. And uh, I give you daily accountability to help you improve the probability of achieving it. And what I mean is I literally show up every single day and you get to chat with me. Um, like through text for the most part, but I'm there every single day checking in on you. I go through threads, I record videos roasting you and stuff like that. And then I have a daily curriculum that you can follow that just improves the probability of you getting your first client. So it's a very well-defined transformation. It's just me all day. Um, you know, I'm in there nonstop. That's really the whole value prop. I mean, you know, you can go over to like Maker School's about page and stuff and see more. We give you, um, 21 grand and immediate software discounts to a lot of the platforms you're probably already using. I give you some templates, some lead gen methods, live coaching, you get calls with me and, and so on and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, just make a long story short, that's about it. So I'm not giving you there anything that I'm not talking about here, okay? So just know that it's just about like compiling the information and then giving you a simple and straightforward roadmap that accumulates it all uh, in one place. Does this change the discovery call frame? Are you still gonna get all the credential acquisition out of the way in the call so you can get that info to a credit card? Yes, I will. Sperry is referring to this um, proposition I made where you can have an MCP, a Model Context Proto Protocol Enabled Agency. The idea behind doing it with MCP is basically you have your, let's say, instantly workspace or make.com environment or an ADEN environment. You give the uh, it your API key. Then you also give it the API key of the account that you are now taking on. And what you do is you just duplicate all of your templates immediately into the workspace on the age. You can do that for you in like 90 seconds. It's pretty cool. I've done some more experimentation with it uh, just today, and I'm a big fan. Ali says, Nick, I see your idea of cloud code and MCP to automate SOPs like your proposal generator. You get the info from the transcript, then just fill out a bunch of variables based on that. It's just a higher level of abstraction and gen definitely a longer sequence. Tell me if I'm wrong. You are 100% right. I think realistically... We're moving towards a situation where you will have a single call with a customer, maybe two, maybe a discovery call and an onboarding call. Throughout that period, you will ask them a bunch of questions. And we no longer need like structured forms or anything because AI will extract all the information from these calls uh, and then use it to populate and fill in templates for your productized service. Then all you do is sort of like what I do in maker school. I show up, I check in, I communicate with the client, I help support them through the process and so on and so forth. This video is like as long as a Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Yeah, that was a two hours and a 27 minute video. What the Falk? Um, Band of the Falk. Send 123KO says, for someone joining Make a School or Make <laughs> make a School, what skills that do you expect them already know before getting started? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. I don't expect you to have any uh, understanding of anything. All you need to know is how to like drag and drop stuff. If you know how to drag and drop your files into the recycle bin, you are okay. 
What's the difference in skill set between running a ten dollars to $20,000 per engagement projects like automations, pain point solving, drag and drop versus handling $500,000 per engagement clients? I've never in my life landed a client worth $500,000. Um, if you have heard this from somebody, it is completely false. Uh, I've never handled anywhere near that much money on a single project. That is insane growth. And uh, I would have a limited ability to answer that question. I typically focus on the small to mid-sized business audience where the maximum engagement size is maybe $20,000 in one go. Um, obviously, lifetime value of clients can be way, way higher than that because of things like retainers and whatnot. And I've made a lot more than that LTV wise. But uh, yeah, no six figure engagements for me. I don't think I'd really be able to answer that. These things require like paid discoveries. They typically require multiple stakeholders. They require uh, many, many weeks and or months of negotiation. And there are a lot more factors at play here that make uh, you know, I was going to say make it a little bit more fragile. I guess when you have that many stakeholders, the, the number one thing is it's a lot slower. I prefer fast feedback loops. I don't like selling to enterprise. I like talking to people that to actually sell to customers themselves. Savage Valley says, Chris, thank you. Harshit, give me some hearts. <laughs> Thanks, man. Yo, Nick, if someone does not have enough money to spend on ads, a good setup and camera for videos, and also not for email campaigns, can they still make their first 10,000 bucks through LinkedIn and Loom? Yes, for sure. Nick, what is your daily schedule? And in your agency, you're also taking sales calls. My daily schedule, for the most part, is uh, I wake up, I do my community management, then I uh, write briefs for because uh, I just hired some writers for content for my YouTube, then I will review the content that they gave me the other day. And then I will, um, uh, when I'm just experimenting with like a different structure, but, uh, then I will, um, try and record those. And then I will record my daily updates. If I have any calls for my community to manage, I will do those in the morning. Um, and then everything from then on out is agency work for left click and or various administrative and miscellaneous tasks. So I do take sales calls. Last sales call I took for left click, I think was like a week and a half ago, about 10 days ago. Um, I'll only take them if it's like a very big enterprise style, not enterprise style, because I just said I don't work with enterprise, but, um, let's just say bigger, higher ROI lead. Uh, for instance, we had somebody that just reached out uh, two days ago that runs a franchise operation with some very, very big painting company. Uh, and they have some locations that make a million dollars a month. And, you know, they're like really fueling a ton of growth. So uh, that is an example of a call that I would, I would go on. Um, but, you know, we also get a lot of like small little things that don't really make that much of a difference to my bottom line that I do not go on myself um, simply because it would not be uh, the most effective usage of my time. In your agency, what is your main services and are your services 100K a month? No, the services are much cheaper than 100K a month. Services are $9,400 a month right now is the uh, retainer size. Main services are AI and automation for growth. So we will build in systems that improve your ability to acquire revenue on the top of funnel. Things like uh, lead gen based systems, um, things like cold email, things like speed to lead. Uh, things like onboarding, CRMs, you know, automated emails when you have a sales call, automated CRM logging and stuff like that, voice recordings and that sort of stuff. So we are scaling the agency. We're not $100,000 a month yet, if that's what you meant. Um, but we certainly will be soon. I think we've all dealt with some Peters here. Peters, my first interested lead. I graduated high school next May. Uh, I will graduate. I've been studying AIAA and your way of doing things for a little while now. I know this is something I want to seriously do. My plan right now is to finish football and then buy six months of maker school so I can get up and running. Can you give me a good plan or roadmap of what my life should look like for the next year or so if I want to do this? Also, do you think it's a good idea to just go all in and skip college? Thanks, Nick. I'm excited to join maker school soon. You know, I wouldn't recommend you skip college just because it was such a foundational experience for me. Um, I mean, the value that I got from college was not value uh, of information. I think it helped build a, a few models in my head that have been useful. But if we're being pragmatic, I could have learned those models in like two months just reading shit for myself. I think if you're the natural sort of go-getter, uh, I don't really think you need college for sure. But at the same time, as I was mentioning, like, man, I've made some great relationships from college. I had a lot of my firsts in college, um, in, in many ways. Um, I got to like experience a lot of ups and downs in college. I got to be held accountable to some outcome in college. Sure. It was like a ton of weight. It was a waste of time in, in some respects, but it was also like very valuable in others. And it made me a much more well-rounded human being. So I'd never recommend that you skip college, I guess, is to make it, make myself clear. What I'd recommend you do is if you want to buy six months of maker school, you're going to need money. The current cost is 184 bucks a month and that'll be going up. But 184 times six, just do the math on that. It's like, oh damn, 1,104. Is that right? Yeah, 1,104. So if you want $1,104, you're going to have to do something for money. So get yourself some job. Save up, you know, two, three grand. And then, um, you know, when you go all in on maker school, you're not going to be constantly counting every last dollar. Hey, Nick, thanks for answering my question. Your daily update's been super clarifying. Quick one on Apollo list building on the free plan. Would you scrape 100 leads directly with Appifiers or worth paying for Apollo early to scale volume? I would scrape uh, 
no, no, you pay for Appify actually is what you do. So I would scrape uh, more than 100 leads with Appify and I would pay for it because then you get to scrape thousands. Um, anyway, how do you keep list hygiene, ensure each search refers fresh, non-overlapping leads? What parameters do you actually vary between saved searches? I rotate geography and then I also rotate company size. It's not going to be 100%. I don't really worry about perfection. I just worry, is this useful to make a long story short? So generally you can deduplicate. It'll just involve you having some separate um, database that you have to store stuff in. It's not the best, not the highest ROI approach. Um, I would just like, yeah, I would just duplicate um, the search and then change some queries and then store it with some new updated name in the in the file or in the Google Sheet itself. Okay. All right, let's talk some business. So my growth over the course of the last little while has been pretty interesting. It was currently September the third, and I've been tracking this diligently over the last little while. My main channel is at 187,272 subscribers. Anybody paying close attention will know this is significantly more growth than I've gotten basically every other day. And We've only published that last video 10 hours ago. That video is probably going to continue raking in super normal subscriber counts for like the next three days. So um, realistically, you know, if I had recorded this later in the day, like I normally do, uh, this would probably be at over a thousand, which will be the first plus thousand day that we would have had, not counting this one, which is kind of bullshit, in like two and a half weeks, I think, right? Two weeks, two and a half weeks, something like that. So why did this work? Well, uh, a couple things. This recent video here is very controversial. For one, it's very controversial to my technical audience um, because what I'm saying is a big chunk of the skill set that they're spending a bunch of time learning is not what I would recommend learning moving forward. Uh, instead, I would recommend focusing on business consulting concepts if you want to continue making money with this business model and then make more uh, money with it. And then I'd focus on like taking high agency moves, like putting yourself in front of customers. And then I'd focus on like communicating uh, needs and requirements to models, so AI uh, prompt engineer. So I made this video and the comments have been pretty freaking terrible. <laughs> They've just been scathing. They're like, Nick has no idea what the he's talking about. Nick's a loser. His uh, video wraps something obvious in a dramatic narrative and sells it as a uh, groundbreaking discovery. Well, do you know what? Like the purpose of this isn't content. Uh, sorry, the purpose of this is not knowledge. I mean, like we live in a post-knowledge era now. You can do whatever that you, you could talk to a talk. You have talking robots for Christ's sake. Uh, the purpose of these videos is very very little to do with knowledge these days. It's literally more like reinforcing core foundational concepts that people have been talking about for many years. So if you watch this video and you were wondering like, Nick, what the hell is going on? I want you guys to know that, uh, you know, like this has been my business thesis for like the last two years. Like there's nothing new here. I've just repeated this over and over and over again, but now my channel's just big. And because it's big, um, there are a lot of people out there that I am now being shown to that just, they don't, they don't like it. And it's the very first time that they've gotten um, FaceTime with me. And so they haven't gotten to see the gradual uh, growth of my content. And so they just see me as like some AI guru bullshitter who's trying to like squeeze them for every dollar they have. So I can't really blame these people for it. But I just want to make it clear that like my whole thing is not about learning specific set of skills. The very first uh, series of videos that I made on YouTube was make.com for people who want to make money. And the entire thing I kept on repeating was, hey, if you want to make money with this stuff, if you don't just want to learn it because automation's cool, because automation is cool, but it's not the end all be all. That's not really the thing that we care about here. We want to make money. Um, then here's, here's how you do it. 99% of all that technical stuff is useless and pointless. Let's focus on the small 10% that you can actually use to make money. If you guys have been with me from there, you'll know that this has been something I just repeat over and over and over again. So anyway, um, now that I'm, I can get off my little pedestal. Yeah, it's it's been very, very, very controversial, which is nice. And then um, it's also popped the hell off with the massive view count. So in ten hours, not even twelve hours, we're not even halfway through the day. It's already at twenty one thousand eight hundred views, which is basically the highest performing video that I've ever published, uh, which is great. Things that I could say definitively um, worked for this video, and learnings that I will take for future ones. Obviously, you can make controversial videos on topics that just shit all over a lot of people in your audience's beliefs. I've come to realize that like, I don't want to make content that supplicates people's pre-existing beliefs about a uh, certain industry or service if I don't believe it myself. So, you know, I don't just want to make videos about how, you know, this new N8N vibe coding agent will make you a billion dollars if it's not something that I actually believe in, right? Um, so, uh, I'm sure it's not going to be the most mathematically optimal approach, but I think if I continue talking about things that I really believe in, then, you know, naturally I'm just going to find the audience that I believe in as well, which is cool. The second thing is structure is very important. Um, I started the video saying that I made $400,000 in the last month and over $400,000. And obviously that's like pretty triggering. And so a lot of people 
start saying, well, how the hell did that guy make his money? And they realize that I make most of my money now talking about a thing as opposed to doing the thing. Little do they know I still make more money doing the thing than 99.99% of them ever will, but that's something else aside. Believe it or not, this sort of controversy is not inherently negative. It might actually be positive, but I don't think I can do it every time. I think I have to like trip it out. I also think it's damn high time that I legitimize myself because you, yeah, you really can't have most of your revenue come from like info product stuff and then make videos that funnel people to info products. That's just bad practice. I want to say that that's just like sub optimal and there are people that do this and actually most people that do this, but then they just like get absolutely shit on and wrecked and nobody really takes them seriously. So it wasn't a big deal when I was making, you know, $50,000 a month because $50,000 a month was primarily for my agency. But even if I'm making $50,000 a month for my agency, and then I'm also making $300,000, uh, $330,000 a month or whatever from something else, then it, be then it becomes a big deal. Do you know what I mean? So like, it's not actually about the total amount of money you make with the thing, even if this, the weight, the amount of money you make with the thing is still better than 99% of people, it is about the relative proportion of the money. So a quick and straight line path for me to legitimize is I basically just need to find that high revenue business, buy it. And then I'm no longer somebody that just makes $400,000 a month, uh, the overwhelming majority being through talking about a thing. I need to have the total, some portion of my revenue be from actual business things. Um, or at least I need to make it so big that it's incontrovertible, something like, you know, Hormozy. Okay. And then a couple other takeaways, um, structuring the content helped a lot. It really did. Uh, not having some fancy flashy intro, I think helped a lot because it just let me talk to people. Um, changing up the assets helped a lot. So instead of using dated assets, this video realistically is probably going to be able to perform for like the rest of the year. Um, and then having like loops and hooks, like, um, this guy, Ed Lawrence, uh, talks about, uh, also worked. So suffice to say, we, you know, took a, took a gamble on this puppy and, uh, yeah, it, uh, it has worked so far and we're going to see crazy, crazy growth in this video, probably unless something crazy happens over the course of the next little while. Look at that. I certainly hope it's not leveling off, but I don't think it is. I mean, it's just insane. We've gotten like 500 subs. Okay. It looks like the sub growth might be leveling off a little bit, but like, since I started this video, I think it's gotten like 30 or 40 more subs, which is crazy. And like, I haven't seen a graph that looks like this in a while. Check this puppy out. If YouTube finally decides to load, haven't seen something that looks like this in a while. 60,000 views in the last 48 hours. Um, I peaked at uh, 90 K. Um, that was like, or 95 K or something in 48 hours. So about 45,000 views a day, um, back when I was publishing every single day. Um, and then until then, most of my content, most of my views have been driven by these two videos, believe it or not, cause they're like search algorithmic, you know, like I optimize for search, but now, you know, we got this crazy browse features ones and we're, we're printing. All right. That is the main takeaway. Uh, I got a couple of cool leads for left click in the last 48 hours, which are awesome. Uh, the new loom video approach I think is being received well, although we will see how it converts into downstream conversion rates. Uh, basically what I do is I record a loom video for a prospect that reaches out. So they get a little bit of initial FaceTime with me. Uh, you know, I get to kick things off. Well, I also get to discuss how my team works, the process that we follow as part of uh, left click things that we find important. Uh, I get to hand it off to my partner, which is very important as well. You know, in a situation like mine, when people reach out, they're like, Oh, I want to work with Nick. That's why I'm reaching out. Well, they don't say that, but like, obviously I'm the one that got them the, you know, the, the thought of working with me. So a lot of people feel kind of chained and handcuffed. Uh, they're like, Oh, I have to work with them because I'm the reason they signed up. But, um, you know, like to be pragmatic, all the way that all big companies do it is they edify their team. They make their team out to be like the real brand of the operation. And then the handoff becomes really easy. So me having a loom video when I get a new request, obviously allows us to do that really easily. Um, yeah, just working out the kinks on the website. And then once we're done with the website, um, yeah, once we're done with the website, then I'll publish it and then I'll make it live. And then I think it'll just do a lot of the explaining as well, which will help. And then, yeah, I guess that's about it. Ladies and gentlemen, just really stoked to move into this new era. Uh, I've recorded another two videos, so going to be really cool seeing just uh, how scheduled we can make things going to pump them out every 48 hours for the next uh, couple of weeks. And then I'm going to go to Japan. And then when I come back from Japan, I will probably start in earnest daily. We'll see how it works with the subscriber count and the growth and stuff, but it's nice actually getting up there again and then publishing content. So, uh, I'm currently hiring a video editor to improve my ability to pump out content. If you guys, uh, apply and you guys think you guys can make some more content to what I just showed you guys in that video, if you haven't checked it out, definitely watch it first, then, uh, yeah, reach out. Um, I have a form just leftclick.typeform.com slash, uh, application. Uh, if you guys click on that, then select video editor and then reach out. Um, otherwise have a lovely rest of the day and thank you guys very much for sticking with me through my smog induced uh, a cognitive 
you know, crazy rambling. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing how things continue to progress.